It says that we are live. That's what it says. That's what it says. Yet it always says setting up on that one. So good afternoon, everybody. This is Marianne Bailey with OnlineTechLessons.com and TheHipSenior.com, where we do the Hip Senior Magazine and the newly launched Hip Senior Directory. And today I have with me the consumer educator, Ryan Lippy. It is Lippy, right, Ryan? You got it. Hey, Ryan, nice to have you with us. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. So you're the consumer educator for uh, the consumer protection section, and that is out of the office of the Attorney General Dave Yost, correct? That's correct. There's actually three educators, and so we are a unit within the consumer protection section. So we're the ones that go out at least when there's not COVID-19 in the society, we go out and give presentations to, to groups live. And then obviously these days we're doing a lot more virtual events and presentations that way through Zoom and GoToMeeting and WebEx, things like that. But ordinarily in normal times, I know we're at a new normal now, but in normal times we travel the state of Ohio in state vehicles and go out and give presentations live. That is awesome. Um, so for online tech lessons, um, it, I used to be called the senior tutor and I rebranded um, about a year and a half ago. And my shoe was always uh, teaching seniors how to be safe because it's really fun to be online and to be able to shop online. My mom was just telling me a couple of days ago or yesterday actually, that there was something that she wanted for her kitchen. I think it was like a, a olive oil spritzer thing. And she had told my dad that she wanted this. And he was like, okay, well, I'll look at the grocery store the next time I'm there. And she goes, ah, oh, don't worry about it. I already went on, on Amazon and ordered it. So yeah. there, there are so many things that, that seniors can do online. And I'm all for that because I think that being able to stay safe, especially here in Ohio and Northern states, it gets snowy and icy in the winter and stuff like that being able to connect with friends and family, especially during this time of pandemic, all of that stuff is really great fun, but they need to be safe when they're doing it. And people, every time I go out and lecture, I think I kind of scare people a little too much because I'm always safety, safety, safety. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, whoa, I can't do anything online. And then that gets a little thing. So I decided to bring you in and let you tell us uh, some tricks and tips to being safe and what to be looking for because you and I met because of the hip senior directory that we just launched this week. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It's been a lot of very hard work, but a lot of fun. And we're meeting some really great people in the process of doing it as well, like yourself. And you and I had a conversation um, yesterday about how uh, a couple different things about different uh, ways that seniors get emails and about the way they use uh, Zoom, not Zoom, uh, Google, right? And oh, signing yeah. up for ads and stuff like that and whatever. So I would love for you to just kind of remember what we talked about yesterday <laughs> and, and, and tell uh, everybody those same things again, because those are really important uh, tips for everybody to be aware of. Yeah, well, our consumer protection section, um, we enforce Ohio's consumer laws. A lot of them are within the Consumer Sales Practices Act. And we do a whole lot more than that as well. Um, we resolve complaints. So if you have a complaint with against a business, whether it's a legitimate business or a scam artist or some combination of the two, we can actually help um, hopefully bring some resolution to the issues and get you a refund if you need a refund. Um, we don't sue on behalf of just one individual. We can't be you know, a law firm and handling individual cases like that. But we do do um, informal dispute resolution. So if a consumer has a problem, and of course, if we see a pattern or practice and get a lot of complaints, that's a different story. But for the individual complaints, we take about 22,000 complaints a year um, against different businesses out there. Ones you think are legitimate, ones that you think might be on the fringes. Then there are some that are outright scams. And sometimes um, the money is lost forever that way. But we try to get we try to protect people proactively as well, and that's the reason why we have an education unit is to get out on the road or in the virtual hemisphere out there, and let people know how to stay safe. And one way to stay safe is to be careful when you interpret search results. 
for example, if I'm going to buy something and I'm looking at whether um, a legitimate web a website is legitimate or not, um, you can find a lot of information just over the web that might give you red flags or reason to second guess uh, your gut instinct that it might be a good deal. And we always say if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And a lot of that's true on the internet as well. There are some good deals to be had. But if you're looking for a business and you search and you find its sponsored results in your search window, that's wonderful. You can certainly click on those advertisements, but understand that those were paid placements. If you want to know your true search results based on your keywords, scroll, scroll down a bit and you'll see the free search results that don't include paid ads right underneath the sponsored links. So just knowing the difference between the two can be very important when you're doing research into whether a business is legitimate or whether you have a toll-free customer service number correctly or whether you want to go to an email account that you think may or may not be uh, the right customer service email for that company. Now, sp so, but sponsored ads aren't always bad, right? Absolutely not. But you just have to understand someone paid to get them up top. Right. And so um, we do have consumers that do get um, that do get scammed by looking at search results, trying to get a toll-free number for tech support for a technology company, whether it be Microsoft or Cisco or Intel or one of the other you know Fortune 500 big tech companies out there. But what they don't understand is scammers go out and promote fraudulent toll-free numbers to get calls in claiming to be customer service for these major companies. And that's a long way of saying, watch out for the phone numbers you see online in, in search results, um, especially if you are looking for tech support because someone could be duping you into getting remote access to your computer with your permission. And, uh, and then it just goes on for there. They can put viruses on your computer. They can siphon money out of your accounts if you have passwords stored on your hard drive. Uh, you don't want to give anybody free access to your computer. You don't want to give them remote access from far away unless you know exactly who it is. And if it's somebody over the web you've never met before, if it's somebody calling you out of the blue saying your computer has a virus, that's absolutely a scam. Nobody can tell if your computer has a virus over the phone or just by looking at you know, information that you may have posted. So just be careful if you get a call out of the blue or if your computer tells you that you have a virus and to call a toll-free number or if you look for tech support and you see in search results, the sponsored results, a toll-free number that looks a little dubious or looks like it's too good to be true, it may be a scam tech support kind of situation where you can lose personal information. You can also lose money if they drain your accounts, get passwords, hack into things. So just be careful. And so if you're looking for a customer service number, it's okay to Google it, but just take the sponsored results with a grain of salt. If you're looking for a tech company's uh, technical support, they do offer a lot of tech support for free. So if someone wants to charge you right off the bat, question that. That's not something you should get into freely for hundreds or thousands of dollars. A lot of these tech support companies, the legitimate ones, offer toll-free numbers. They offer free services. You may have to wait 20 minutes or so on hold, but at least it's not a scam artist. It's a legitimate thing. Especially if it's like a monthly uh, subscription type thing where they're charging right. your credit card over and over and over and you just can't get it canceled. And unfortunately, also, and unfortunately, we have seniors out there that have given up hundreds or even thousands of dollars for computer help. Right. When it's not, when it's not even legitimate. Not only are they not getting help, but then they're duped out of thousands of dollars as well under the guise of being tech support. Right. Most, you know, 95% of my customers are senior citizens. And so when I go to somebody's home or I hop on Zoom with somebody these days, now that I'm not out as much, you know, it amazes me the stories that people have done and they just don't know who to trust anymore. And I always tell them one of the things also is, uh, you know, if you get an email and the English isn't correct, 
that's a big, big sign right there. Or if they seem too desperate, you know, you've got to contact us right now, or, you know, the special is going to end and, you know, 12 hours from now, or you've got to call us right now because it's an emergency. Your computer is, uh, has a virus and all of your information is about to be released. If you don't call us. Yeah. We get Computer lots companies and lots aren't that des- like you know, that. they're not that anxious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if they say it's an emergency, it's immediate, you need to make a split second decision, do your research instead of making that split second decision, relax, do your homework, Talk to folks in your area, in your community. If you have people that know about technology in your life, if you have friends and family that maybe are on devices and gadgets more often than you are, pause, give them a call, tell them the story, tell them what's going on before you make any kind of hasty decision to give someone either your personal information or of course your hard earned money. But these days, information is worth money as well. So just because someone's only asking for your social security number doesn't mean that doesn't have any value. In fact, they could use that alone to, to commit different types of identity theft that will co- could cost you in the long run. You know, I don't just help seniors with, with computer stuff, but I also help them, you know, those the frauds when people call and say, you know, oh, your grandson's hit a light pole and he's in jail and the insurance will pay for the light pole, but it's going to be a few months and we don't want him sitting in jail for that long. Can you send us, you know, $20,000 or whatever, $5,000 and they make you go to the store and get um, prepaid cards and stuff like that. And I always tell people, I always create it, I call it emotional brain versus rational brain. If you could just like hang up the phone and say, you know what? I'll give me a phone number to call you back in, in 10 minutes and, and let me discuss this with my wife or my husband, or let me think about this. Chances are they're not, you know, or call me back in 10 minutes. They're not going to call you back because they realize that in that time, your rational brain has kicked in out of emotional yeah. brain and, and you can check on your family members, call them, you know, even if they say, Oh, don't call your family members, call your family members, let Absolutely. them know that there are, something's going on and you know they're they're saying the grandchild or i even heard ryan that 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 has been reversed and that they're contacting grandchildren saying that the grandparents are in trouble and trying to get you know even if they can only get a couple hundred dollars out of them that you know money's money um do you You know know, is is that true well what's interesting is people in their 20s and 30s actually get duped by scams more often than older adults. Now, older adults lose more money, especially in romance scams and sweepstakes scams and sweetheart scams. The the older folks lose a lot more money, and I'm not saying they're not targeted. They definitely do target older adults with a lot of scams. But when you look at who's biting at the apple, it's actually more often people in their 20s and 30s that may not know the scams, that may not have seen one of our presentations, that may not be targeted all the time. But um, we see so many different types of imposter scams using family genealogy or using uh, information people glean from social media about who your cousins are and who your nieces and nephews are. It can go in any direction. Um, What we see most of is the grandparent scam. But um, lots of people can be duped by very similar types of scams simply using those relationships that someone may have found out, even through an obituary or through public records, people might know part of your family tree and they may take that, uh, take advantage of that by calling you or calling someone in your family and making you think something is wrong with your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle, your cousin, somebody like that. So the sky's the limit in terms of where these scammers will go. And there's no morals or ethics about it to them. This is their full-time job. Uh, I don't think they have a lot of sympathy and they certainly um, contact Americans enough through internet-based dialing and through very cheap programs that uh, they've perfected their craft. They have 24 hours a day to try to get the message down, to try to swindle money out of you with a story. And so they're very savvy. They're very good at it. And so what we try to do is help people learn the red flags. For instance, you Um, You just mentioned one while we were talking, that's prepaid money cards, gift cards. Uh, Those are are friends of the scam artists. 
Now, I'm not saying not to get your kids a gift card for Christmas, right. but if somebody wants a Google Play card to do business with you, or if somebody wants an Amazon gift card as payment for something and they're not actually Amazon, that's right. going to be a scam. iTunes is huge too, right? iTunes is huge too, absolutely. People can drain those accounts or resell them on the secondary market. And uh, iTunes cards, if you're not buying music with iTunes cards, you have no business using iTunes cards for any type of uh, business measurement or currency like that. It's simply to buy songs on the iTunes store. Let me tell you the story that, that one of my clients, before they met me, this happened. And uh, I know, I think some legislation has been passed since this happened. Um, they got a call. It was a, one of the grandparents scams that their grandson had, you know, hit a, like I said, the scenario had hit a light pole. He was in jail and stuff like that. Right. And the people, they, their emotional brain was in gear and they went to Walmart to buy $5,000 or whatever it was worth of iTunes cards, because that's what the guy said he wanted. And they just, okay yeah and they went to walmart to buy these cards and the cashier luckily you know perked up and said you know i have to get my manager to get this high of a number of, of itunes cards you know let me grab him and he came and he said you know what's going on and they said well we're buying a car because the guy had said don't tell anybody you know that this is going on or whatever and they listened to him and he says well they're buying a car you're buying a car with itunes cards and they were like, well, that's what they want. And he said, you know, that's kind of strange. And, and you know, can you tell me really what's, what's really going on? Luckily, you know, they everybody was seeing those red flags and was starting to say, hey, what's really going on? Please tell us, you know, the whole story here so we can help you and, and be able to do this. Another friend of mine's daughter works at a bank. And about a year ago, she told me that they had passed some legislation legislation that enabled uh, like bank tellers and people that work with seniors or people like that, um, that, that they could actively ask questions as to what is going on and why they're withdrawing so much large money out of their bank account and stuff like that. Do you know yeah. anything about that? Well, there are, there are mandatory reporters out there that um, need to go ahead and tell authorities if they hear of someone, an older person that may have been swindled or maybe in the middle of a scam. Um, Adult Protective Services it can play a very important role in, um, in trying to help seniors, especially if they don't have uh, their, their um, you know, if they, if they don't have capacity to make a decision on their own with financial issues. So there are mandatory reporters and that's gotten expanded, I believe, in the last couple of years to include bankers and financial advisors and folks like that. So if they see something, they need to say something. And right. You don't have to be able to prove it. You're not out. It's not a matter of trying to prove anything or any standard of, of um, guilt or innocence or anything. It's basically if you see something, say something. And so that the adult protective services or social workers, folks like that can find out, get to the bottom of what's happening. If you have an inkling that something might be happening to a senior please tell someone, tell someone in their family, tell adult protective services, tell someone um, the law enforcement if that's necessary. But um, it's really important. We have a whole part of our section at the office called um, Elder Justice, the Elder Justice Unit. And it started out as an initiative a few years ago and now it's its own unit. And they deal with best practices statewide. They do trainings for people in APS. And they'll, they can give you all the different tests in terms of capacity and what it means for someone to be able to make a decision for themselves. And now sometimes that is lost by folks due to, uh, due to the condition of some of our um, vulnerable seniors. So um, mandatory reporters is, is important throughout the country, but here in Ohio, they've taken the step of making sure that financial folks are mandatory reporters as well. And you don't have to be able to prove a case. It's just a matter of being able, if you see something, to tell the authorities so that they have the best interests of the older person at heart. And I think a lot of times uh, the older person won't repeat or won't 
actually admit that they have been scammed or something that's going on and that we have a much lower number of actual reported cases than there than that has happened and a lot of times it's because the older person is scared that their family members are either going to tease them for it or they're going to take away their credit cards or their ability to drive or whatever it may be because they start questioning whether or not they're actually capable of making these decisions and so it's a kind of a really double-edged sword you're trying to do the best for them um, most of the time, not maliciously, there are some people that, 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 you know, we see a lot of, you know, fraud that happens within families um, as well. And a lot of elder abuse that happens within people that we know, just like children are adopt, usually kidnapped by somebody they, they know. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, that kind of um, stuff happens. Um, I was recently to having a conversation with somebody who was revamping his business based on the credibility and the reputation that his mother had when she was much younger in the business world and, and, and the socialite world and stuff like that. And all I could think about was, really? Are you really doing the best for your mother and, and really helping her out? Or are you doing the best for you? And, and yeah. is, is her money what should be going towards hers and make, her making that decision where it goes really being handled for her? So, like I said, like you said, um, you know, if you see something, say something and make people aware of what's going on, because there's a lot of times that people are scared to put their nose where it doesn't belong. And yeah. then the senior ends up losing big time in this, whether it's financially or physically or whatever the case may be. And we do have a lot of cases where a senior simply doesn't believe they're in a scam. They really think they have a true relationship with someone they've only met online or they think that it's a sweepstakes and they're taking the bait and they don't understand that there's no prize. They're just trying to get money out of you. Um, but we do get a lot of folks that are embarrassed or ashamed. We get family members that call us because they can't get through to using their own wits. They can't get through to their loved one that they're actually being scammed and it's not legitimate at all. Uh, so we get a lot of phone calls like that. And we do encourage people to give us a call. Uh, we have a help center at the attorney general's office, and that's for the entire office. So we actually have about 33 sections of the attorney general's office. But I think they probably get a lot of calls for the consumer protection section. But no matter what you need from the attorney general's office, um, just give us a call at 800 282 0515. Again, that's 800 282 0515. Or if you know it's something consumer protection related, go to our website. We have a special website, ohioprotects.org, or you can go to the big website, ohioattorneygeneral.gov. But you may be having an easier time finding something if you know it's consumer related by going to our little site, ohioprotects.org, and trying to find the information you're seeking. And we have lots of literature on scams and fraud, identity theft victim assistance we offer. Uh, again, we offer informal dispute resolution for your business situations where you, you um, are expected to pay a business money, but they haven't satisfied their end of the deal. Um, we have a lots of calls about robocalls. Who's, who's not sick of getting robocalls? We now have a robocall enforcement unit that was created in March to help people out and to try to resolve some of these, these robocalls that are annoying us. Right. I get, I get a lot of questions all the time. How do I stop these on my cell phone? How... Okay. Speaking of cell phones, my smartwatch decided it had to speak to <laughs> Can find a network connection, but anyway, yeah, I get a lot of questions all the time from people saying, "How do I start out, stop these robocalls on my cell phone or from calling my home number?" And until recently, uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of ways. You know, there, there, the no call did the did the There's no call calling. list did that just not work or? Well. No one took it seriously or it wasn't being enforced? The federal do not call list and the do not call registry works to a certain point. And that point is where we have telemarketers that are cooperative, that follow the law, that abide by your wishes. Now, if a telemarketer breaks the law, 
there are certainly enforcement measures that happen throughout the year at the Federal Trade Commission and the Federal Communications Commission especially that enforce the do not call law. But those that skirt the do not call law a lot of times are just scammers. And it's hard to get them because they're usually out of the country. They use caller ID spoofing to make their phone number look to be local when it's really not. That's hard. That's hard. They they try to stay anonymous. They stay under the radar and they make calls for pennies or percentages of pennies a minute worldwide to try to scam you. And so do not call was was uh, formulated to help with the telemarketers and to get that industry under control. But what I don't think they envisioned was the vast array of robocalls we're getting from total scam artists that we see now. And they can use caller ID to change their phone number. They use the caller ID spoofing to hide behind their phone number. And, um, and that's where the do not call list sort of doesn't work so well and where people have to take their own initiative to put apps on their phone to help with annoying calls, uh, call up their phone company and see if there are um, products and services that might meet their needs in terms of annoying robocalls and uh, reporting as well. You know, if they report the phone number to our office we probably won't get back in touch with them and work hand in hand with the consumer in those cases, but we may be able to furnish that information about your call to the phone company or get information from third parties and help get their help in tracing back the phone call to where it originated from. So so even though they're spoofing that. So even though they're spoofing that phone number to begin with, uh, they, they can go back and trace it. If so even get, though, because I know some people have gotten phone calls from um, their um, their deceased uh, family members' cell phone, what it looks like it could be their right. deceased cell phone, cell phone, which can be really upsetting, right? Yes. Or their next door neighbor, and they call them. They're like, you know, why do you keep calling and hanging up on me, or calling trying to call me, or whatever? And they're like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. And, and so, we get a lot of we get a lot of people that get calls from folks accusing them of calling them when it really wasn't them. They've been they've had their phone number spoofed, so they're sort of a victim as well. Yeah, it's it's happened to me. So I mean, it's don't think that because something happens uh, to you that it's not happening to others, or because things are happening to other people that you hear of, like on national news, that it can't happen to you here locally as well as far as any kind of scamming could be. And I always try to tell people, you know, I have, you know, I'm in the Dayton, Ohio area and I have, you know, customers here that tell me these stories like before they met me and before I tell them, hey, it's okay not to answer your phone if you don't know the number. It's okay if to hang up on people if they're trying to get information from you or to to tell you things that you know just really are. If it, like you said earlier, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And if your gut is saying something's off, you know, it's okay to hang up on somebody if it's legit and they really need to speak to you. Um, you can either call them back on the number that you know is is the right number for them, or they may even call you back because usually scammers won't call someone like twice successive successively, twice in a row. <laughs> but success, forget it. Anyway, twice in a row, um, they'll usually move on to to the next person because it's a numbers game for them, and so. Yeah, two important things here. You you hit one right on the head. Don't answer. Don't feel obligated to answer the phone if you don't know who the number is on your caller ID. They'll leave a message. They'll leave a message if it's important. And if it's right. really important, they maybe they'll leave a message and call you back. Right. But if they're not willing to leave a message, don't be willing to talk to them if you don't know the phone number. And second of all, it's as easy as texting the word ROBO, R-O-B-O, to 888-111. What that does is that tells our office you're trying to report a robocall. We send you a form. It's an automated system that sends you a form for you to fill out that takes literally two minutes or less about the call that you've just received. And then you How can does submit that form it to our website. What's that? How does that form come to you? Um, if you text 888-111, you'll get more information as a text message, I believe. Okay. But um, you'll get a link. 
And I think you get a link to the robocall form to fill out on our website, or you can just go directly to our website at ohioprotects.org. But it's really easy to remember. It's just the word robo to 888-111. Try it, try it the next time and see, um, and uh, let us know if, um, if it's too onerous for you. But I, we've, what we found is that We've gotten about 32,000 of, of 32, reports just since March on um, the robocall enforcement unit at just by people texting or going through ohioprotects.org and reporting that robocall and who, what time it was, who your carrier is. There's some information we want from you. So be, please be as complete as possible because then we'll have the best chance of actually getting someone to help us trace the call back to its origin and hopefully get some enforcement action against robocallers. And it's been helpful so far through our enforcement actions in our office and at the Federal Trade Commission. We've had luck with tracing back some of the numbers people have submitted and getting to the root of the problem. Well, I'm so glad that Ohio is doing its part in um, trying to protect um, consumers and seniors and Ryan, I am I am so grateful that you came on today with me because, like I said, I'm always you know just trying to to look out for seniors out there and, and make sure that they are uh, that they're staying safe as well. You know, part of it is us looking out for them, but part of them is is knowing themselves what's going on and what to be aware of, so they can look out for themselves as where well, as well. Yeah. And again, if you if you see someone in your community that you think has a problem with the scam, uh, please let them know that you're there to help. Try to contact other folks in their lives if that's necessary. Um, if you think they are, you know, not not functioning appropriately, don't have the mental capacity to make financial decisions, that might be a case for adult protective services. So find out the number of adult protective services in your community, or there's a statewide 800 number that you can find online for Ohio's adult protective services. And you, they'll get you in touch with someone locally that can help. Great. And if anybody missed any of the phone numbers or information that Ryan gave us earlier, I'll put those in the comments and in this post Great. as well. And again, I met Ryan because we recently launched a directory called the Hip Senior Directory. And what the premises of that is, is that creating a directory that helps businesses be able to reach senior citizens, but also be able to getting senior citizens the resource to be able to, to go onto this website, it pulls up where you're located and pulls up businesses in your area. But the neat thing about it is that the, all these businesses are vetted. We have personally, as we add businesses to this, we're not just, you know, signing them up. We're taking uh, the time to call them and ask them about their business. Do, do they normally work with seniors? Are they patient and they kind and they're glad to repeat things if a if a senior would call and say, you know, I, I'm confused about what it is that you're really offering or what is the what is the price with this? Or are they willing to repeat things over and over and, and clearly explain things? And so it's a little bit different than just going on Google and searching for Google because you just like Ryan said earlier, you never know what it is that you're going to find when you're searching on Google and it could be a scam. We know that we are personally speaking with each of these businesses to try to eliminate as much scamming going on and stuff like that for um, for seniors as well. In our, you know, at our office, in the attorney general's office, all of our complaints from the public, 21, 22,000 of them a year, are public record. So if someone wants to come in and ask for information about a company or what their complaint record is, we can share all the open or closed complaints from the past couple of years uh, for them so that they then have that tool in their arsenal in order to be able to make an educated decision about whether to do business with that company or not. Better Business Bureau gives letter grades to a lot of companies. And, um, and we, have, we have a list in, in our office, a database online that you can get to through ohioprotects.org. You can search for uh, complaints that have been filed by our office against all of these bunches of companies out there that are bad actors or potentially bad actors because of allegations of 
um, unconscionable business practices and things like that. So we actually have a database of the complaints, of the judgments, of the complaint history from um, the consumers as well. So very important resource to have at your, uh, in your toolbox if you're out there trying to make educated decisions. Okay, so they can either go to thehipsenior.com and click on directory and they can find your post, uh, your listing in there and then get a lot of this information and the link to the website from there as well. Yes. Um, or they can call, what's the number again? 800-282-0515. And remember, Ohio protects, it's plural, Ohio protects dot o-r-g ohioprotects.org that is wonderful ryan thank you so much for coming on with us today and educating us more um i hope you'll come back on with me again and and oh, teach absolutely. a little bit more absolutely you know we really want people to get value out of our office so if you need help give us a call if you want to be educated get some of our publications have me come out to give a presentation not right now but we can do it virtually at this point but if you want to contact us for publications or a presentation, use that same toll-free number. We can come out and talk to church groups. We can do virtual presentations with uh, townships. We can do all kinds of work with businesses and nonprofits. So uh, feel free to let us know how we can help you. And you've got, you sent me some, some flyers about uh, scams and seniors as yeah. well, right? That was, that was really helpful too. We put those in and happy bags that we're distributing to seniors. Um, we got some coming out for Thanksgiving, so. Excellent, good timing. All right, Ryan, thanks again. I appreciate you being on. All right, well, thanks so much, Marianne. I appreciate it. All right, have a great day. Thanks, you too.